so hello everyone welcome and welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be fruitful for those who are preparing for any license exams three days before i had given my exam and i cracked my license exam at the first attempt so in this video i will be sharing you the question that were asked in the exam and i will be sharing you few questions that i remember so let's see one by one and here the very first one is the supervision theorem is not applicable to here we have the option voltage calculation bilateral elements power calculations and passive elements so here the correct option is c power calculations as power is not linear with the voltage and current so supervision theorem is not applicable to power calculations so here the option c is correct and here the second one is the power factor of dc circuit is always and here we have the option zero option b less than one option c greater than one and option d unity so the power factor dc circuit is always unity and here for concept the overall power factor is defined as the cosine of angle between the phase voltage and the phase current and in ac circuit the power factor is the ratio of real power following to the load to the apparent power in water and the real power is defined the unit for real power is watt and the apparent power is volt ampere so it is it can be also defined as the watt to volt ampere ratio and you know the power factor is given as cos phi and since phi is the angle between the voltage and the current so uh, for a purely resistive dc circuit the angle between the voltage and the current is 0 degree so the power factor is going to be cos 0 that is unity so the power factor will be unity that is 1 so here the correct one is option d similarly here we have the next one according to enkistic stability criteria where should be the position of all zeros corresponding to s plane so obviously the position should be on the left half here according to enkistic stability criteria zeros must lie on the left half of the s plane so for the system to be stable the poles and zeros should lie on the left half of the s plane And here we have the next one which TTL saw family has maximum speed so here the maximum speed have short key clamped TTL so short key clamped TTL saw family has the maximum speed and for explanations of transistor transistor logic and similarly short key clamped transistor to transistor logic you can you can read this part and now the next one that were asked find the Fourier transform of e to the power minus area so the Fourier transform of e to the power minus at will be 1 upon a plus j omega and here this is the calculation part you can see the calculation part by your own now thermistor here thermistor has the property of here we have the option no resistance zero temperature coefficient negative temperature coefficient and positive temperature coefficient so here the correct option is 3 here negative temperature coefficient so here thermistor is made with the combination of two word thermal plus resistors and thermistors are generally made up of semiconductor materials and thermistor have a negative temperature coefficient of resistance and this is the basic circuit diagram of thyristors sorry thyristor yes so here the thermistor has the property of negative temperature coefficient so option 3 is correct here and similarly here we have the feedback of ideal operational amplifier is connected to so here the feedback of operational amplifier is always connected to the inverting input so here we have the correct one the inverting input is the correct one here now here a 0 to 5 ampere pmmc emitter does not have any control mechanism now if a current of 2 ampere dc is passed through the coil the reading shown by the meter would be Frictional opposition is overcome by the torque produced. So here we have the option given 2 ampere, 5 ampere, pointer rotates, con rotates continuously and pointer does not rotate. So here is the concept behind it. And here PMMC instrument used to measure the DC quantity and control, con control torque is responsible for deflection of analog meter directly proportional to the applied quantity. And this torque is produced by the spring actions and opposes the deflection torque so that the pointer can over, overcome to rest at the point where these two torque are equal. 
that is electromagnetic torque is equals to the control spring torque and the value of torque control torque depends upon the mechanical design of this uh, sp spiral springs and the stripe suspension so here the controlling torque is directly proportional to the angle of deflection of the coils so given that the condition a 0 to 5 ampere pmmc emitter does not have any controlling mechanism now if a current of 2 ampere dc is passed through the coil the reading shown by meter would be 5 ampere when frictional opposition is overcome by the torque produced so here the correct option is here option 2 5 ampere and here in force voltage analogy so in force voltage analogy here we can see here we have the force analogy here voltage analogy and the current analogy so in force voltage analogy here you can see velocity is analogous to current so velocity is analogous to current so option 3 is correct now which of the following method is the strongest tool to determine the stability and the transient response of the circuit obviously root locus so here root locus is the strongest tool for determining the stability and the transient response of the system as it gives the exact pole zero locations and also their effect on the response so here we have the correct option root locus option 4 now an acceptable voltage range of logic 0 for ttl circuit ttl means transistor transistor logic so here we have the option 0 to 0 0.8 volt 0 to 1.5 volt 2 to 5 volt and 3.5 to 5 volt so here option 1 is correct so here we have the acceptable voltage range for logic 0 is 0 to 0 0.8 volt here we can see this is for low means logic 0 we have the voltage range 0 to 0, uh, 0 0.8 volt and for logic high means logic 1 its voltage range is 2 volt to 5 volt and this is the acceptable ttl gate input in signal levels and acceptable ttl gate output signals so here for logic 0 it is 0 to 0 volt to 0 0.5 volt and for high it is 2.7 to 5 volt so for logic 0 for ttl here the correct option is 1 0 to 0 0.8 volt now the maximum torque angle of synchronous motor is obviously the maximum torque angle of synchronous motor is 90 degree so here option 4 is correct and sometimes uh, pull out torque can also be acted so the pull out torque of synchronous motor is 75 degree so for pull out torque we can choose 75 degree and for maximum torque angle you can choose 90 degree R. now the maximum speed of synchronous motor at 50 hertz frequency is so here we have the option 1500 rpm 3000 rpm 20,000 rpm and 30,000 rpms. So here is the concept we need. We know the synchronous speed is given as 120F upon P and F equal to 50 hertz given in the questions and to get the maximum speed the pole must be minimum. So the pole must be 2, P equals to 2. So the synchronous speed will be NS 120 into F <coughs> 120 into F upon P. So 120F frequency is 50 and where we have the minimum pole P is equal to 2 so the ns will be 3000 rpm so the correct option is 2 here now the speed of synchronous motor here we know the speed of synchronous motor is always constant so here synchronous motor are capable of running at constant speed irrespective of the load acting on them so and unlike induction motor where the speed of motor depends upon the torque acting on them synchronous motor have got a constant speed torque characteristics so therefore from no load speed to full load speed the torque of three phase synchronous motor remains constant throughout so the speed of synchronous motor always remains constant and here is the table given list of tables ask for amplitude amplitude shift kings frequency shift kings and phase shift kings so from this table you may be asked as which one has more bandwidth or which one consumes the least, least power so such type of question may be asked so altogether two questions were asked from this table also. one where which one has the better noise immunity and other one was which one has the low bit rate so here the low bit rate is obviously here ASK so you can read this table now a parity check usually can detect so a parity check usually can detect one bit errors a parity check usually can detect one bit errors and a parity check is a check bit which is added to the block of data for error det detection purpose and it is used to validate the integrity of data and the value of parity bit is assigned either 0 or 1 that makes the number of ones in the message block either even or odd depending upon the type of parity now here for example 
if the original data is 101001 and there are always three ones when even parity checking is used a parity bit with value 1 is added to the data left side to make the number of ones even so here one should be added at this left side to make the number of ones even now transmitted data will becomes after adding one here it will be 11010001 however if odd parity checking is used then the parity bit value will be zero here so here for parity check usually a parity check usually can detect one bit error so the correct option is one now the time constant yes you can have the value of rel and c will be given and you may be asked to find the time constant of rel and sometimes you may all you may be also be you may also be asked to find the time constant of rc circuit so if time constant of rl is said then just use the formula l upon r and in order to find the time constant of rc circuit use rc so these are the formula to calculate the time constant for rl rl equals to in tau is equals to l upon r and for time constant of rc tau is equals to rc so you may use this formula to calculate the time constant for rl and rc circuit now the members in NEA Nepal Engineering Council so total members in NEA is 25 and the total members in Nepal Engineering Council is 21 so in Nepal Engineering Association the member is 25 and in council means Nepal Engineering Council it is 21 now the first executive council was formed on MAG 2056 under the chairmanship of E.R. Ram Bau Sarma and completed its tenure on MAG mark 2060 so you can remember the name of this chairman first uh, chairmanship under er ram babu sarma and was formed on mark 2056 so you can remember this date and the name of this person now nepal engineering council does not need the involvement of option doctor engineers option c powers and d insurance company obviously nepal engineering council does not need the involvement of barber now which one can be considered as a valid contact first destroying the illegal building without the permission third constructing a road without any protocol option c pro constructing a bridge to cross the river and option d contract with mentally not fit persons or below 16 years of age so the correct option is constructing a bridge to cross the river and also this formula was asked the annual cost of capital recovery so the annual cost of capital recovery is given as a is equals to p i into 1 plus i to the power n into upon 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 so you can remember this formula in order to calculate the annual cost of capital recovery so thank you hope you will like the videos so do share and subscribe to my channels and stay tuned to my channels and best of luck for the exam thank you